Hey everyone, Aaron with Elite Water Sports and school is in session. We are talking about some bar sizes, kite setting, and also line lengths, and how to maximize your progression there out on the water. It's a it's a features that we have at our uh, at our fingertips, or and the ability is there to adjust our kites and our bars and and the line lengths to really maximize uh, our time out in the water. It's something that I don't see anybody really taking advantage of, but yet every single company has the options out there to do so. Okay, let's talk about bar sizes, right? Bar sizes, right? What you have is typically a 45, sometimes smaller, okay, but 45, 50, 55, 62. Bar sizes are essentially how far of a throw does a bar have, okay? If the lines are way out here on a 62 centimeter bar, right? You're gonna have more throw. It's not about leverage so much, sure, a little bit, but let's not get into math, right? So leverage says that if I have 62 centimeters to travel, right? Essentially, I can get that line to pull a little further than I can with a 45 centimeter bar. Okay, so line length or bar length is going to have a direct impact on how fast you can get a kite to move around the sky. Some slower kites, you put a big bar on, you can really get that kite to move really, really fast. But think about this real world application, right? If you're doing a back roll, okay. And all of a sudden you realize that your kite is getting way wacky. It's going way to the left, bit, way to the right. You're losing control of that connectivity with your kite. Well, guess what? If you had a smaller bar, the kite's going to react far less than if you have this really ginormous bar. Okay. Sure. There's some, um, you know, situations where you can bring your hands together. You can overlap them. You can do all of that, but why not just change the bar size? And you won't have to reconfigure what you're doing with all your hands. I mean, special cases, sure, you're going to need everything it takes to get you to do that trick. But um, so bar sizes, right, are a crucial thing. If you can't figure out that trick, shorten your bar. See what happens, okay? It might just be the variable that makes you successful, okay? Kite settings, right? If you look at the kite on the very end, it's hard to kind of like... Uh, verbally talk about this, right? So this is a side profile view of your kite. Typically you have bridles going down in the front, right? All cascading in, you know, and this goes down to your bar. And then you also have what is wingtip settings, okay? Some kite companies have A, B, C, or one, two, three, whatever it is, I don't know. But you have settings. And most companies out there will have it coming straight out of the bag on the middle setting. And what this does, and you know, it's lost in translation, everybody talks about it differently, but essentially this is more of a leverage situation and some other factors, but leverage situation, if that you hook your kite up to this wingtip over here, okay, that kite's gonna be easier to move, it's gonna be easier to fly, it's gonna be a little faster in the sky, okay? Meaning, if you're doing that back roll, the same trick we were trying a second ago, if we're doing that back roll and that kite surges itself way off to the left and all of a sudden all to the right, or maybe you're doing a loop and you just can't figure out why, well, why not change that setting to the furthest position away, the beginner setting, okay? I like to call it the beginner setting. It's also like a freestyle setting, like if you're doing unhook, you don't want the kite to move ever, okay? Of course, the kite's going to be a lot slower. You're going to have to be a little bit more muscular to get that kite to move in a proper way to get it to the exact location. But guess what? You've just increased your chances by doing bar size and wingtip setting to uh, complete that trick, to get the trick done. Okay. So again, if you're learning something like in the more kite loop range where you're wanting the kite to be super fast and agile, bigger bar and the furthest out closest to the wingtip i should say setting right here that'll be for like kite loops all right and then this setting beginner status all right so beginner status there now let's go into the more technical side line lengths all right most companies out there are going to be in the 23 range the 24 22.7 ish something like that okay Every brand's a little different. Now remember, they're making these kites specifically for like bar size and the feel that they're going for on the line length, all right? So straight out of the bag, most kite companies are just gonna sell you what they want you to feel in the kite. That's why they're, 
standard settings on that middle setting on most kites, okay? All right, also, if they want to really gear a kite towards being fast, quote unquote, fast to the sky, they're gonna come stock with the setting odd on the wingtip, right? Well, for bar or line lengths, line lengths are super cool, and it's something I play with uh, quite a bit. And if you have Mini Man right here, right? If you had 24 meters of line, right? This is essentially 24 meters, right? Look how much room that kite has to travel, right? How much more power are you going to have with longer lines? Because point A to point B, right? It has to travel further and longer, right? So the power band, the amount of power that kite can create is longer, right? Now all of a sudden you shorten those lines up, right? Now look how far it has to travel, not very far at all. So that power range, that power delivery is gonna be short and sporadic, right? So what can that be used for, right? Well, in the wake style setting, wake style, we want that kite to be really parked and upfront and personable, and we can use a little bit bigger kite for stability, okay? We're not gonna have as much power as we kind of mess up and the kite gets out of place, all right? But let's talk about on the surf side. Surfing, right? You're bombing a wave, bombing a lip, right? Maybe the kite's not uh, in the exact position you want. Well, with shorter lines, boom, now it's there. Versus long, look how long it takes to get to that new position, right? Additionally, foiling. Foiling, I love 16 meter lines. That is my jam, okay? If I'm in 24 meter lines, that doesn't help me very much in light winds. And sure, as a beginner, sure, it might help you a bit, um, you know, doing footwork or transitional work, but man, get me some 16 meter lines and my whole day is magical, okay? So, reason being, the kite's very direct. It's there, wherever I put it, the kite's going to, or wherever I want to put it, the kite's going to be there almost instantaneously whenever I want it to be there, okay? So a lot of kite companies have um, pro bars, per se, that come in like two meter increments uh, where like you can really focus and technically like get the kite exactly the line length that you want. Um, and other companies don't have that option. And you just bring it into the, the kite shop, we can cut the lines down or make extensions for you and all that good jazz, okay? So in review, bar sizes. Bar sizes are crucial to maybe perhaps your success on a new trick that you haven't been able to land yet. Mess around with that, that might be the trick. Kite settings, also same thing. Change those wingtips out. Other kite companies might have some bridal stuff, you know? doesn't really change too much, but it does. And then line lengths. Line lengths are my jam. I like changing line lengths and getting the most out of the gear that I have, all right? So this is Aaron with Elite Water Sports. If you have any other questions, just call us, all right? 727-800-2202. You can always do like an email too, ride at elitewatersports.com, and we'll catch you later out on the water.